G'day ZKD here with another Walson guide, this time on crafting. While you could rely on drops alone to improve your gear, crafting in Walson allows you to create new items better suited to your build and improve already good items further. Those of you who've followed my Path of Exile content know that I love crafting gear in that game, and the good news is that Walson seems to have taken some inspiration from PoE to make its own fairly powerful crafting system. There are four different crafting reagent types you can use in Walson that come in both normal and greater versions. The normal ones can be used to craft rare items and the greater versions to craft legendary ones. Each reagent type can be used on an item normally to craft, but they can also interact with socketed gems, consuming them to influence the crafting results. Now in a moment we'll go through each reagent in order of rarity. First though, remember that each application here you can use either a normal reagent to craft a rare item or a greater version to craft a legendary one. Long term of course, you'll want the most powerful legendaries possible, but rares can be quite strong. For example, a rare with 4 perfect stats might well beat a legendary with only 3 good ones, and 3 ones that aren't good for your build. The regular versions of the reagents are also quite common, so don't be afraid to experiment and try crafting some rares to see if you can end up with something good before you attempt some legendary crafting. So the first reagent type and most common is the Entropy Orb. Its basic application is simply to reroll all of the modifiers on a rare or legendary item, completely randomly. You can spam these on a pair of boots, for example, until you land something good. You're simply playing the RNG game here, effectively simulating a bunch of the same item dropping again and again. You'll want to just find a good base item type that you like that is already rare, and then use Entropy Orbs to keep re-rolling. The more advanced usage of Entropy Orbs is to take advantage of gem sockets. If you socket a gem into an item and then use an Entropy Orb on it, the gem will be consumed and one of the random modifiers will be based on the gem's type, with a power level based on the tier of the gem. The way this gem consuming system seems to work is based on a somewhat loose category system. If you use a copperstone gem for example, which have primarily physical modifiers, you'll get a modifier from the material category of mods, which physical is a part of. If you use aether gems, you'll see an occult modifier, and so on. So it's effectively a loose thematic grouping for the influenced modifier. Figuring out what sort of modifiers you can produce with each gem will likely take some more experimentation. As far as I can tell, the socket type doesn't seem to matter, but it could be possible that there is some nuanced effect I haven't yet noticed in my testing. For items with multiple sockets, you need to fill each socket, or you run the risk of the craft randomly selecting an empty socket, and thus not producing a gem-related result. So in a general sense, if you want to see more material mods when crafting a weapon, socket material gems while you use entropy orbs on the item. Now moving on to the next reagent, we have Ohm's Echoes. These do two things in order. Remove a random modifier, and then add a new modifier. A socketed gem will influence the added modifier. An example of one you might want to use in Ohm's Echo is to improve an almost good item. Say that you have a legendary weapon with two damage mods, you could use an Ohm's Echo with material gems socket inside of it to have a chance at removing one of the random modifiers, and if you're lucky, adding a material modifier that could be damage. So effectively you can try to improve an almost good item to make it good, or gamble on making a near perfect item perfect by removing a dead or less valuable modifier and giving you a chance to add a better one. Keep in mind that the modifier removed is random, so you might end up removing a good modifier you want to keep. Therein lies the gamble. The next reagent is for when you want to get a bit more deterministic about the modifier that you remove, and it's the Abyssal tier. At its basic application it will remove one random modifier from an item, and that's it. With a socketed gem, you can influence the removal process by preserving an existing modifier. Say for example you want to keep a physical modifier, you could use a copper stone with an abyssal tier to try and remove one of the other modifiers, freeing up a modifier slot. And the reason why you'd want to do that is to potentially use the next crafting reagent. And that is the final and most valuable reagent, the Erebon tier. This reagent allows you to simply add a random modifier to an item that has an open modifier slot. Rare items can have 3 or 4 modifiers, so you can add a mod to a 3 stat with an Erebon tier, and legendaries can have 5 or 6 modifiers, so you can add one to a 5 stat legendary. What makes these very powerful is that you can also socket a gem in the item to influence the modifier that is added with the Erebon tier. You'll primarily use these on already good items that have a free modifier slot to hopefully add something to make the item even better and in some cases you'll combine their use with the prior abyssal tier to remove specific modifiers and then try and add better ones. 
A combination of spamming entropy orbs, possibly with specific gems to try and get a solid starting item, and then improving that item with abyssal tiers and Erebon tiers with gems, will likely be the strongest way of producing the best items in the game. They'll give you a lot more control over what sort of item you can end up with, so you can aim for that perfect triple material damage crit damage weapon you've dreamt of. For the most part, you'll likely be using entropy orbs frequently on decent item bases for your build to try and find upgrades, and then you'll use the occasional Erebon's tier to improve a really good but unfinished item that you've found. Ohm's Echoes will see a bit of use as a cheaper alternative to try and improve almost good items that you don't care too much about, and Abessal Tears comboed with Erebon Tears to try and shoot for those perfect items late game. Now let's talk about one more special thing you can use in crafting to make some powerful items, the Genesis Stone. These can be used in gem slots when crafting to produce unique modifiers that can normally only be found on items from the score screen of Untainted Expeditions. Let's call these Untainted Modifiers. There's a number of these untainted modifiers available for each item slot, such as an additional ailment stack or piercing on jewellery, an increased max rage and willpower on armour, and mods that allow you to use off-class skills on weapons. In particular, I've used Genesis stones to craft powerful rings with added spell damage to attacks for my gun mage build. You can use a Genesis stone with an entropy orb to roll an item that has one untainted modifier, and then other random mods. But the most powerful use of these will be to take an already great item with a free modifier space and use an Erebon's tier with a Genesis Stone to guarantee one of these untainted mods. These mods are very powerful on some builds, so definitely keep them in mind for late game crafting and save up those Genesis Stones for that purpose. And that just about covers what I know so far about the reagent crafting system and how you can use it. Feel free to post any questions you have in the comments below. That's it for now, I'm Ziggy D, and thanks for watching.